Just to give you a little context, um, I lost my dad in 2009, and he lost his dad in 1966. Uh, so I, I wrote this piece in 2009 into 2010. I put it up in New York City. At the beginning of 2011, I went through my own suicidal crisis. I did come across some really, really interesting information that gave me a lot of joy and a lot of hope that suicide is preventable and that you know you and I and we all can get help for each other. And that was interesting to me because I thought it was inevitable. I thought, you know, my grandfather, my father, I'm next. And that's not the case. I'm not a slave to my heritage. I'm not a slave to my brain. I can make decisions. I can make choices. I can put in safety nets. Just like, you know, if, if you know you have alcoholism in your family, you can put in cer certain safety nets and precautions and things like that, heart disease, anything like that. I can do the same thing with depression and a history of suicide in my family. So that's what I do. Didn't do that right away, but I do that now. You know, I want to talk about how and where to get help, what suicide and depression look like, um, you know, how to help a friend, and, and what recovery looks like. I was, you know, I'm, I'm certainly a prideful person. I've been in the past. You know, I've been working since I was 15, paying all my bills. I didn't need anybody. I got this. I can take care of it. I'm, you know, a guy. I don't need, I don't need instructions. I got it all. But you know what? If I, if I, if I let my pride continue, my pride was going to get me killed. So I had to ask for help. People ask me all the time, if I say the word suicide, if I ask somebody about it, isn't that going to make them do it? And the answer to that question is 150% no. Biology students in the room, you need that carbon dioxide to oxygen exchange. You know, that's as far into biology as I can go. So um, <laughs> I saw that on Wikipedia. No, I'm kidding. But really getting to that person face to face is huge. It's something that can keep a person going. Um, it certainly did in my case. Uh, bad things happen all the time. You know, but I wanted to be able to do something where when I fall, I want to be able to bounce and not break. I have these tools that I put in my resiliency toolbox. And they're, they were tremendous for my recovery, and they are things that are sort of staples in my life that I just, it's not work anymore. It's just, I just, they're just good habits. You know, I had to go out of the house, and I had to force myself to go see friends. Isolating was not going to be uh, something that would be good for my long-term health and mental health. And creative writing was big for me, and it wasn't like, and I don't say you've got to be a creative writer, but creativity is, is wonderful. It, it took my, it, 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 re, it engaged another piece of my brain and helped me map out certain things that I needed to work out. And, you know, creativity, it doesn't matter what you do. If you make a macaroni necklace, do a tap dance, I don't care, whatever makes you feel better. If you're going through something like I went through, you know, depression, anything really, if there's something you can't handle, get help immediately. You know, don't try to think you can do it all. Um, nip it in the bud before, before it can become prolonged depression or suicidal thoughts because there's a good chance if I didn't get help the day I got help, I might not be here right now. And every day is a gift.